Longtime journalist Jackie Reed is a leading voice in media. She's a co-host on NBC4's lifestyle and entertainment shows, New York Live and The Hub Today. Reed's talents have landed her on some of the most esteemed platforms such as The View, CNN Headline News, BET Nightly News, the nationally syndicated Tom Joyner Morning Show, and more. When Reed is not dishing out the latest news or interviewing celebrities, she's giving her followers useful tips to live out their best lives. Reed is the curator and president of the Vegan Sexy Cool brand, a resource that shows her subscribers how to thrive with plant-based eating and overall vegan lifestyle. She provides helpful information on her website, vegansexycool.com, her podcast, YouTube channel, and more. Jackie, welcome to the <laughs> Get Loved Up. Hey, how are you? It's so good to see your face. Oh my goodness. I had so much fun on your show. I just had to have you on mine. Sis, you are making a splash in the world. You are vibrant. You are just vivacious. Oh. That's the word, vivacious. Korea, you are so kind. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And right back at you. I had so much fun and it is such a pleasure to be here with you today so we can just continue the conversation. Right. And we and we have to continue the conversation because right now, you know, we have, you know, mental health crisis due to all the other crises we are experiencing, but we also have 31% of people who are transitioning to the vegan lifestyle are people of color. Did you know that statistic? I did, I did. I'm so excited. It's the fastest. We are going into veganism faster than any other group on this planet. And I'm so happy about that. I'm so happy about that. Now, why do you think is the reason for this spike in our community specifically? I think, Two things. I think that veganism, we hear so much about it, right? It's everywhere. And so now you have it's not something that just white people and white celebrities are leaning into, but a lot of black celebrities are now doing this and talking about the benefits of it, particularly people who have been longtime vegans, like the singer Maya, uh, Jermaine Dupri, uh, oh, it was his name, uh, John Sally, right? People who have been doing this for a long, long time. And so many people are starting to, through social media, focus on people who are looking good and feeling good and looking for wellness through lifestyle and things like that. And so more and more you hear about veganism and it's something that's been in the black community, as you know, for a very long time, but now people are starting to hear more and more about it. And it's more accessible. I think that people are realizing, hmm, not that they should lean into too much into the processed foods, but the impossible burgers and the beyond burgers and the things like that. You know, there are more commercials, more people are talking about it. You go to any grocery store and there's vegan this and vegan that, plant-based this, plant-based that. Um, you know what I mean? So it's more and more readily available. And I think that that is the reason why more Black people are leaning into it. I love that. And I also know that, you know, especially in our communities, normally there is a lot of, you know, lactose intolerance. And I feel like naturally, you know, plant-based milk is like such a beautiful alternative instead of no milk at all or something that doesn't really even taste good. Right. And I also feel like with the rising cases of high blood pressure and things like that, switching to a plant-based diet and getting rid of a lot of that processed food, not only animals and meat, but also a lot of processed food. It's really people, we are really seeing a huge shift in our health, our energy levels across the board. Yeah. I mean, I was excited when I heard the statistics because, you know, with my family and friends, girl feels like I'm having a debate almost every day <laughs> trying to convince somebody or, or, you know, they, they're curious about it. Right. But they feel like it's so hard. Um, and it's just, you know, why do I have to give up this or what am I going to eat instead of that? It just feels so challenging for so many people that I come in contact with, but I'm excited to hear those numbers because that means that, you know, folks like me and you were out there living the example and people are starting to take notice and they want to change their lives. I think people want to live 
healthier lives. And I think Black people specifically want to live healthier lives. Even before the whole COVID outbreak, I think we were leaning into this. And I think after this, the numbers are going to go up even faster. Absolutely. I 100% agree. And I feel like, like you said, celebrities and also social media has been a big uh, proponent, just showing people how quick and easy the recipes are and more people posting videos and showing people like, this is not hard. It's not difficult. And the fact, I know when I started, people that were vegan didn't look that healthy. So you see one, a person that looks like you and the fact that they look healthy and you're a little right. bit more convinced, right? Right, 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 right. Cause that's so true. You can be vegan and not be anywhere near healthy because as you, as you know, potato chips, French fries, all kinds of fried foods, you know, can be uh, vegan. Um, and so you, I think you need to be plant-based whole food focused. Right. Absolutely. And what would be your top, let's just say your top three tips for someone who's trying to transition. I know you work with a lot of people now. So what are your top three tips off top? Anybody listening to this podcast, they're like, you know what? They look healthy. They sound excited. You know what? I'm going to try it out. What are your top three tips for them? Number one, I would say focus on what your why is. For me, I'm an ethical vegan, right? It started out with me wanting to save as many animals um, that I could not wanted to do any harm to the animal community. But in that journey, because of the animals, I also realized how healthy it was for me. So you can also lean into it because you want to be your healthy best. And then there are environmental reasons. Um, so there's so many reasons that you can lean into wanting to be vegan, vegan but you have to figure out what that is because it's not easy, especially in the beginning. It gets easier and easier as you go along, but you're gonna need something to remind you while why you are doing this. I mean, hey, go for all three. Do it for the animals, do it for your own health and do it for the environment. Um, there's so many reasons to lean in for that. So that would be the first thing that I would say, find your why. Then I would say, do your homework. Don't be like me. I just jumped in. I decided one day, I'm just doing this. And I really didn't know. I would go to the grocery store and I'd be like, I don't know what to eat. So I would end up eating the same things and it could get really boring really quick. And you can get frustrated really quickly. I didn't know how to cook tofu. I had never cooked it before. I didn't know how to, you know, there's so many foods that I know how to, that I've been introduced to. And I know how to cook in a variety of ways now that I never would have messed with chickpeas. I had never had chickpeas before going vegan. Now I eat them as snacks. They're in everything. I cannot eat enough chickpeas, uh, farro, you know, a whole grain, nutritional yeast. There's so many things that I've learned. So I would say do your homework and find sources for recipes and find. And the first thing you need to do is just mimic what you already like to eat. That's the easiest way to do it. Before you lean into nutrition and all that kind of stuff, just lean. If you like pizza, eat vegan pizza. If you like Italian food, eat vegan. There, there, eat vegan Italian food. There are vegan versions of any and everything you want. And then, lastly, I would say, learn about the nutrition. I hate to put that last, but it's hard to kind of, in my opinion, to burden yourself with that um, and try to figure out how to eat. Um, it'd be great if you could do it at the same time, but a lot of people don't have that patience or discipline, but I would say quickly learn about, you know, B12, vitamin D nutrients and supplements that you need to have on a regular basis to make sure that because you're switching, it's not that you can't get what you need on a vegan diet, you're switching up what you're eating. So you need to make sure that you're leaning into it and being your healthy best. Even if you're not eating vegan, you need to pay attention to nutrients and, and, and what supplements and things like that you need. But on a vegan diet, I would say that would be the number three thing that I would do. I love that. Thank you so much for those three tips. I definitely agree. I mean, you ha- you have to, when you have your why, when people are making fun of you or you don't have anything to eat, you won't necessarily slip back. So I love that you said that. And then, you know, like you said, when it comes to just having fun, so I'm a foodie, so I eat healthy 80 to 90% of the time, but you know, every now and then I want my vegan pizza, I want my vegan donuts, I have vegan donuts today, and I just kind of eat what I call dirty vegan. 
Um, but I don't do that all of the time. I do it in a very balanced way. So I'm glad that you call that out because I do feel like the fact that it is more accessible, as you mentioned before, and that we have more people making it so it actually tastes good. Yeah. I do think that it, that's also a cause for the rise in number because it tastes good and it's fun. But then I, I'm glad, and I'm glad you listed it third because sometimes, as you said, it can be overwhelming to completely change your diet and change in a way that maybe your family doesn't eat, your kids or your spouse doesn't eat. So I feel like first, you are going to be healthy if you, you're switching over. But if you switch from a, a healthy uh, animal-based diet when you were just eating you know, protein and greens, and you switch to a processed vegan diet, yes, that's not that's not a good move. But if you're eating processed regularly and you come to processed vegan, the vegan diet is going to be healthier. Right. So if right. you're trying right. to learn, especially because I have some of my health friends, they'll switch over and they're like, oh, I don't feel as good. But then I ask them what they're eating. I realize they're switching over to a lot of the, the processed proteins because they're nervous about the proteins, you right. know, getting enough proteins. And I'm like, okay, let's talk about that. So can you speak? I know that's the biggest question out there as a vegan. How do you get your protein? So would you share your answer to that question? Um, Because I know everyone, no matter what vegan person that I I speak to, everyone wants that question answered. Some people get tired of it, but I think it's important because it's the number one concern when people switch over. Yeah, the first thing I like to say when people uh, ask me about that, and you know this, is we have to stop thinking that animals are our source of protein, or you know, and without them that we can't get it. Because cows don't eat meat, they eat grass. So where does that protein come from? It comes from the grass. You know what I mean? Gorillas, look at how big and muscular that they, they are. They're not eating meat, they're not carnivores, they eat plants. You know, right not right. I can't say rhin- rhinosaurus. I can't say rhinoceros. <laughs> <Right, laughs> it's like it became it became a sound for me. I don't know what that's called, but when a word becomes a sound, and all of a sudden you can't pronounce it, but you know, rhinos, girl, rhinos. <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. I know what you're talking about. Rhinos, but anyway, <laughs> girl, they don't eat uh, other meat. They eat plants, and we hear elephants. You go on and on. So. First, you have to retrain your brain. That's that's a big part of being vegan too. You have to kind of that food pyramid. A lot of us grew up and saying you got to eat these things a certain kind of way. Throw that out, right? Um, you do not have to eat animals in order to get protein. Period. It, it, look, it, there's study after study after study. It is a lie. You don't have to do that. Okay. So where do you get your protein when you eat plants, or when you eat a plant based meal? beans, lentils, right? Legumes. You're going to get proteins from those, but I would say be careful with that depending on your digestive system, gas, things like that. But I mean, I good, thank God beans are good with me. I love beans. I eat them all the time. And, and when you become vegan, you learn how to cook things like beans in so many different ways um, that it's just, I, I love beans so much. I never knew I could love them so much. Chickpeas, as I mentioned before, a great source of, um, of protein. Nuts, you know, peanuts and, and the seeds and things like that are a great source of protein. Uh, I would skip the roasted salted nuts and I would do raw nuts, which is what I do now. Again, even if you're not trying to eat vegan, let go of those. There's so much fat in those nuts. It is ridiculous. And I think when you eat the raw nuts, you're getting the good fat, right? You're getting some fat, so you don't want to overdo it, but it's a great source of um, of protein. Nutritional yeast, which I mentioned earlier, is a great source of protein. There's protein in a lot of plants, uh, broccoli, spinach, um, and so many others. So check, you know, what goes into a lot of different plants because a lot of them have protein, which is why animals have protein, get the protein they need from eating plants. So there are so many sources out there. You do not have to worry about cutting meat out of your diet and not getting the protein that you need. 
Thank you for saying that. I know people are relieved, like, okay, all right, I get yeah. it. And I, I think I think really comparing it to the plant eating big, large angel animals, like the gorilla. Like people, the rhinos. Like the rhinos, <laughs> you know, and they're, they're eating plants. And so you can get the amino acids, which are the building blocks for protein from plants. I got a lot of plants. I eat all those plants on there. Um, I have a lot of friends who are bodybuilders who yeah. are now vegan, um, whole food vegan. So eating clean fruits and vegetables will give you, and if you need to supplement, which I'm glad you brought up supplements as well, because even on, if you, even if you are eating animal protein, we will, there will be some supplementation depending on where you live, depending on how much you're eating, depending on weight, your height. And so highly suggest getting your, I want to throw this on there, always get your blood work done, make sure you know where your levels are. And if you do need to supplement, supplement, if you can't get all your nutrients from your plant. <laughs> oh, and I want to add in spirulina, which I love throwing into a smoothie, which is a great source of protein as well. And Agreed. really a superfood, so healthy for you. I love that. I love spirulina. I love um, also putting in my ice cream and making green ice cream. That's so delicious. <laughs> it's so green, right? It's so rich in color. So how, how long has it been since you started Vegan Sexy Cool? Now I want to really dive into like kind of what about your personal journey because you were always vegan. And so what really uh, shifted things for you? I think it was two things. I think I was highly, I've always been an animal lover. I've uh, had pets all my life. And I think it was the death of my dog, um, Sugar Shane, five years ago. And that so that was heavy because Sugar Shane, just the connection that I had with that dog was so special. And I realized then when he died that animals have souls. Um, it just, oh, it just, I mean, to this day, it hurts my heart that that dog is no longer with me. He was my child. And so, so that was heavy on my mind. And then I was watching something on Facebook and it was an ad for some animal advocacy group. I don't even know. All I know is that there was a black woman who was the featured person in this quick little, maybe two minute ad, right? And it started out her walking down the street and there were these people handing out pamphlets that were animal rights advocates. And she took it and you could see what she was looking at. And it was something about saving animals. And she just, you know, it planted a seed in her head. She was clearly not a vegan at that point, but it planted a seed. And so she was going through life and kind of talking to friends of hers about it and noticing how many, um, you know, how much animal products she was congesting. And then she, um, she watched a video about, you know, animals being tortured and brutalized for our, our consumption. And she decided at the end, she was the one out there handing out the pamphlet. She became an animal activist. And I was like, huh. So that pushed me to do the research because I think for a lot of people, we know where that burger on our plate comes from. We know where that steak on our plate comes from. We know where the milk comes from. Most people, we know where the cheese comes from, but we don't want to think about it, right? Mm -hmm. We don't want to think about it. We think that the cows are out there being grass fed and they're just living their lives. And, you know, one day when they're, you know, they get old and they die, that's when they become you know, our hamburgers and our steaks and things like that. But that is not the case. Um, some of these animals never see the light of day. They're in cages. Um, so, you know, when they get pregnant, the cows, you know, they take the calves, they, they, the cows birth the cows, the calves, the calves are taken away right away so that they can take those milks. You know, when I was a kid, I always thought that, I, you know, I don't know why, I just thought that cows just, you know, female cows just had the udders and they just, produced milk. I didn't think about the fact that like women, you know, like human women, we produce milk when we're pregnant, right? And so those cows are impregnated artificially in most cases, just for the production of it. And then their calves are taken away, usually slaughtered for veal, the male cows or the female cows are taken away and raised, you know, in a tiny little pen. And then they, the same process is um, continued. 
you know, and they're e either used for food or for leather. Um, and so I just did not want to be a part of that anymore once I knew the truth. I let myself do the research. It's hard to watch like that. Um, Cowspiracy. Yes, Cowspiracy. There's a new one out, I think, called Seaspiracy or something. It's something about, you know, aquatic life that a lot of people are watching and saying, um, I'm going vegan now because of that. You know, once you see the truth out there and people just don't want to believe that the cruelty that's happening out there is not just cruel to the animals, including the fish, you know, in, in the sea and around the world, but also it's hurting the ocean. And that's what um, this new documentary, I, I want to say a Seaspiracy on Netflix, goes into. And so once I let myself really do the research and really see the truth behind it and learn that I could save 200 animals myself by going vegan, I felt like it was a sacrifice worth making. I felt like, you know, as much as I used to love chicken wings, I felt like I could give that up. I could give that up for the sake of animals being able to just live their lives, man. You know, it was important enough for me. And so my, my goal is to encourage other people to realize the truth about what's happening to animals around the world and to realize you too can be vegan and you don't have to sacrifice anything. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you for going there. Cause I don't think we had, we've ever had that visual on the get loved up podcast of really, this is what, this is what's happening and watching those movies like Cowspiracy, Seaspiracy, Forks Over Knives, Super Size Me. I mean, I can go on and on and it just, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes as a young, especially as a child, but then when you are an adult, you, you know what's happening. And I feel that, as you were saying in the beginning, once you make that soul connection with an animal, you realize like, oh, okay, if I don't have to eat an animal, you know, of course you wouldn't eat your dog or your cat. So what makes a cow, what makes it, what makes it okay to eat a cow or, or a pig? And I feel like that, that's, that definitely sticks out in my mind of like, hey, if I don't have to eat these things to be healthy, then why would I, you know? And why so would I, I and, and, you know, like we had this chef on our, the TV show that I do, this celebrity chef, and she was talking about traveling around the world, you know, at the time she had just come back from a trip where she ate whale and horse meat and some other things. And and people in our studio were just like, oh, they just couldn't believe it. And I was sitting there saying, what is the difference between that and a cow? How, how is it wrong to eat a horse, right? But it's okay to eat a cow. How is it wrong to eat a whale, but it's okay to, you know, eat shark? you know, eat sharks and sea turtles and other animals of the sea. Like, it's just like when you it's, really think about it, it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. They all suffer um, the same and it's not right. It's, un it's unfortunate that certain, um, you know, certain animals just, just got unlucky, you know, with how they ended up you know, on, on the menu and other an animals are appreciated, you know, like eagles as opposed to chickens. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And I know it can be very, you know, I definitely know this can't be triggering. So if you're listening, you're like, Oh, you know, just, I, it didn't happen for me overnight. I don't, it didn't happen for Jackie overnight. Just, this is like planting the seed to do your own research, research and find yeah. out like, is this something that I want to be a part of? Is this something I want to contribute to? And if you are, you want to at least know the fact. At least know yes. what's happening do, during the whole process and make sure you're signing up for that because things are colored, things are sugar-coated. You think it is a happy cow, that, how, that cow is not happy. You know, it's just like, so at least you know the truth and then you can make your own. And so we just want to shed truth and light. We're, yeah. I'm in non-judgmental non -judgmental place. So is Jackie. But I love that we're bringing up why we're so passionate about it because I feel like that's something I don't do as much, but people do need to hear it because when you make that connection of this is another 
soul. This is in parallel with the, the pets that we want to have being house pets. There is no difference between a dolphin, I mean, a dolphin and a whale and a fish. These are all creatures of the sea. So I really appreciate your candidness and really sharing what that connection means for you. Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of people, it makes them uncomfortable. And listen, it makes me uncomfortable, not just to talk about it, but I'm telling you, I follow some accounts on social media because they're animal advocate accounts and I'll be scrolling through and I'll see some graphic content of some animal being abused or something. And I have to scroll through. I even unfollowed an account um, because it just will upset me so much. Um, I don't want to see it, but I'm, I'm glad that I let myself lean into it enough to realize what was going on was wrong and that I could do something to make a difference. And like you said, it's up to you, you know what I mean? But just do the homework, just know the facts and then decide what you want to do. Well, but I hope you'll decide to become vegan. <laughs> Yeah, join the vegan train. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. And, what, you know, that's one of our pillars. One of our pillars is, you know, our motto at Get Loved Up is love yourself, love others, and love the planet. And part of that love the planet pillar is plant-based nutrition. So I want to go back a little bit and talk about your own practice of self-care and spirituality. So what are your practices? Like I said, we have a lot of challenge when it comes to me mental health, especially in the Black community. So what are you doing now to kind of get loved up and preserve your mental health? First and foremost, I practice knowing my limits. I practice knowing myself. I mean, it was something that my therapist helped me realize that I had to make room for myself. I was, I had way too much on my plate and I was just trying to do everything. Uh, it's, I call it that New York pace. You know, when you live in New York and some people outside of New York have it, but it's something special in New York where you just go, 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 go. I can do this. I can do that. I can do this. I can do that. Um, and I had so much on my plate and I really didn't have enough time to just kind of relax and just be and just hear my own thoughts sometimes. I was just going from one thing to the next. And so, and when the pandemic hit, that's when I really hit a wall, right? I really didn't slow down before then, but once the pandemic hit, I was like, this is great. I'll be working from home. I can do even more. <laughs> I can start this. Let me do IG live every day. Let me do this. Let me do that. And I really, my therapist was like, no, 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 no. You, this is the time more than ever because we're in a pandemic because of the racial unrest that is happening and you are a black woman, right? So this affects you um, very deeply. You have to really step back and take, the time for yourself. She was like, IG Live will be there when all of this is over. Everything that you feel like you have to do now, it will keep. She said, if you don't focus on your mental health, then none of the other stuff matters. It'll all fall apart anyway. So that's what I did. And what, what I, when I say I give myself space and I got to know myself, I can feel when there is too much on my plate. I know, and I know when I need to say no, right? I don't need to give a lot of explanation, but I know when I, I can look at my week and say, okay, there's too much on my schedule. I need to make time for me. And time for me may not be, not, may not be planned. It may not be, I need to work out at this time or I need to have time to just, it just means that I can't have too much stuff cluttering my day. So the, the first thing that I did and that I do is I make space on my calendar for me so that things are not too crowded. And then I also make time to practice working out, breath work, you know what I mean? Breathing is, it's like a drug to me. <laughs> I make sure that in the morning and when I can at night, if I don't fall asleep, I will do, you know, a certain number of breaths 
10, you know, 10 repetitions of, you know, breathing in, holding it, breathing out, breathing in, holding it, breathing out with, uh, to a certain count. I'll do that 10 times. And when I tell you it, it will change, it can change my mood. It can change just how I just, just how I feel. Um, it definitely makes a difference. And then I make sure that I make time for things and people that are important to me. I try to lean into those things, but that's like when I clear my schedule of work things or, and that's even making commitments to do anything that work relates to my brand, the vegan sexy cool brand or the Jackie Reed brand. I have to make sure that there is time and that my, there, there is time for me to do things that has nothing to do with those things. And that's the most important thing that I do aside from eating. Um, and then there's therapy. You know what I mean? I, I think it's so important to talk about therapy and you know, normalize it and not make people feel ashamed for going to, to therapy. I mean, a lot of people still aren't comfortable with going. They don't think that they need it. They think that they think that it means that their life is in crisis. With everything going on in the world, now is a perfect time to pour into yourself. If you've been thinking about joining the wellness community and learning more about your health and wellness and how to improve the well-being of others, then the Get Loved Up Holistic Health and Yoga Teacher Training is for you. We have a variety of offerings from the 100 hour to get a taste of how holistic health and yoga can bless your life and the 200 to 500 hours to deep dive into the study of how meditation, breath work, yoga, and mindful living can transform your health and the health of our world. Go to koyaweb.com forward slash YTT for more details. I'll see you there. And, you know, I'm not ashamed to talk about one of the most important factors when it comes to my mental wellness, and that is therapy. I don't think that I would have done well uh, this past year without a therapist. I probably would have survived it, but I don't know where I would have been mentally or physically. Um, but I think I like to talk about therapy. I think it's important. I think a lot of people feel like if I'm, if I'm going to see a therapist, that means that my life is a mess and that I'm in crisis. And I don't think that that is the case. Your life doesn't have to be in crisis in order for you to go to a therapist. But if it is in crisis, it is a good idea to go to see a therapist. And even if you just are struggling with some things mentally, it's a good idea to go see a therapist. I like to normalize therapy, so I talk about it often. And I think everybody, no matter where you are um, on your journey, I think if you, uh, and, and I wanna say if you could afford it, but hopefully you can find a therapist. I think there's, I don't wanna, therapy should be more affordable put it that way, but hopefully you can find someone to talk to whatever your price point is. But if you can lean into a therapist or group therapy or something like that, I think it's a really good idea. So that, you know, that is like my wellness cocktail for me, all of those things. Mm, thank you so much. Absolutely. And for those who um, can't afford therapy, the Love and Light foundation is a really great foundation that you can wow. sign up and you can get a therapist that they have scholarships and things like that and there are more um, places where you can go and, and get therapy um, if you need a sliding scale or if you just need you know free therapy so thank you so much for mentioning that because I have a therapist I think therapy is important because living in the world we're all going through these these crises and it's one thing to process yourself which i think is important and get loved up and practice self-care but for those deeper traumas being able to have someone to talk to that can see outside of you is so important and being and being able to talk to someone who's skilled in the profession of knowing the questions to ask to lead you to a healthier state i think it's so yeah. important yeah me too i agree i absolutely agree with that so, you know, a big part of the second pillar of Get Loved Up is relationships. So can we dive a little bit into relationships? Because I know as a dynamic person, it could be strain on relationship, especially romantic relationships. So can we go in a little bit there? Yes, I would say, you know, the, the thing that I have learned to manage better within this year because of therapy and really leaning into wellness in this past year, the way that I have 
that my relationships have thrived. All of them, romantic and otherwise, are the best that they could be in this moment, right? With not being able to see people, like I haven't seen my mother, you know, in a, in a year, my sister in a year, a lot of my family, I just have not seen any uh, relatives. I have not seen, I've only seen one girlfriend once, <laughs> you know, outside of Zoom and, and things like that. I haven't seen people. I fortunately live with my boyfriend, so I do get to see him every day. And that, you know, that relationship has gotten even better. I think that we have gotten even closer because we had to ride this out together. We learned so much about each other, working together, you know, working, you know, on different projects under the same roof, roof and really being partners through all of this, whether in the beginning, making sure we have food and toilet paper. And you know what I mean, it just became a partnership like it had never been before. Um, even now to the point of making sure we're getting vaccinated, making sure, you know, different things are happening and looking out for his family and my, my family, uh, we have developed into, I would say a really strong partnership. But I think that relationships too, you have to realize when it's time to pull the plug. And that's something that I learned too. I feel like, you know how they say some relationships are only for a season. I realized that it was beneficial for me to move away from some relationships. And I'm like that, I've been like that really all my life in romantic relationships. But when it came to friendships, girlfriends and things like that, I would really ride things out and just try to work things out. But I realized in trying to alleviate stress and anxiety from my life, I realized that there were some people in my life that were causing me stress. And I had to, you know, it wasn't like a, I'm breaking up with you kind of thing, but mm -hmm. it was just giving it space knowing that for me, I needed to just put things on pause. I didn't need to have a big confrontation or anything, but just realizing that people evolve. And sometimes within friendships, you evolve in different directions. You grow in different directions. It doesn't mean that, that there has to be any kind of huge blow up or some trauma that happened. Sometimes you just grow in different directions. That, that doesn't mean that anybody is the bad guy. But I did realize when it came to work relationships, when it came to friendships, that, and even some family members, that I had to distance myself in order to maintain my own peace. I think more than anything, and people, some people will feel like this a bad, is a bad thing to say, but you have to be selfish sometimes. Sometimes when it comes to, so often when it comes to self-care, you really have to put yourself first. I think you really, if you're not taking care of yourself, I don't think you're gonna be good in any relationship. If you are not happy and happiness comes from, to me, primarily from self-care, making sure that you are taking care of what you need so that you can you know, be a part of someone else's life and not be a drain on them in any kind of way. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that because I agree, like when you, love yourself you have much more to give to those other relationships but if you just yeah. give giving giving and not loving yourself eventually you're going to become depleted so thank you for giving us that insight and um i know that veganism is something that you're really passionate about it when it comes to you know making a impact in the world so i want to kind of also get into your entrepreneurship which is um growing your vegan sexy cool community can you let me know a little bit with why you started that community and what are your plans for its expansion yeah i started vegan sexy cool because i would as a vegan always get asked so many questions and you know this about how hard is it what do you eat what do you blah, 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 all that kind of stuff and so for me being vegan is not just about what i eat it's also about the beauty products that i use the hair products that i use it's about what i wear it's everything i am vegan in every sense of the word and so i wanted to i realized that people didn't know 
um, that you could get great shoes or a really nice bag that was vegan. They felt like it was, you know, pleather. It was just cheap, you know, imitation leather. And it was, you know, not quality this, not quality that. And I'm a, you know, like you said, I'm a foodie. So I love great food. I love great fashion. I love great beauty products. I want great products for my hair, but I don't want animals to suffer for any of those things. And so I wanted to introduce people to a lifestyle where they would there where they could enjoy all of those things without feeling like they were sacrificing anything. So it's like, hey, here's this great wine for those of you who who drink, or here's this great non-alcoholic wine and it's vegan. Here's this great nail polish. Or, you know, here are these great head wraps that don't have silk in them. Hey, they're satin. Um, but just letting people know about those things and, you know, also giving them great recipes and great resources for food and introducing them to other vegans so they can be encouraged and educating them about what's going on in the world of animal cruelty and just waking. So educating them along the way. And so that's why I started Vegan Sexy Cool you know, dot com, the website, and then the Vegan Sexy Cool podcast. And then my goal is to just build the brand, just be a resource for people who want to live a vegan lifestyle and thrive in it and don't want to feel again, like they're sacrificing anything. And I want to educate people. I want to just be out there and people know that, Hey, when I go to vegan, sexy, cool, it's going to be something fun. I'm going to learn about something. I'm going to find out where I can get great products, things that I love. Um, Cause I love great things, you know? So I want people to realize again, that they don't have to sacrifice. And so I want it to grow and be as big as it can be. I love that. Well, I'm excited. I was excited when I found out you were vegan. And then I was excited when I found out about your podcast. I was excited to be on your podcast. And I think we just need so many more people championing this lifestyle and showing how it's possible, how it's vegan, sexy, and cool. So I think you do a great, great, great job of that. And so I have like a little speed round where we, I just ask you questions and you give the first answer that comes to your mind. You ready? Ready. Okay. What is the favorite book you've read in the last year? Oh my God. Bevelations by Bevy Smith. It is one of the funnest, craziest, um, most thought provoking books that I have read in a long time. If you know Bevy Smith, she is so much fun, but she is one of the smartest people that I know. And this book is, it's a lot of fun. You should definitely pick it up. Okay, I'm putting it on my reading list. Yeah. Okay. And then your favorite show. Ooh, that's a tough one. There's so many because I watch everything. Favorite TV show. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know what? I have to say, even though it could be better in the diversity department, I love, oh, this is a hard question because I love, so many shows are going through my mind. I do love Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso is such a feel good show. Um, it's on Apple TV. It's just one of those shows that it just, it, you know, I watched it twice. It, uh, it's such a good show. There's so many shows that I could say, but that's, that's, that's one that I do love. Okay, I'll have to check that out because I've never seen it. And it's then so I want to know what your, what are your, so I tell people, you need to have your five favorite fruits and your five favorite vegetables. Seriously, if you have five favorite fruits and five favorite vegetables, you can be vegan. So yes. can you share with us your five favorite fruits and vegetables? Oh God, yeah. Okay, favorite fruits. <laughs> that's easy. I'm sorry, my head is always going down. So yes, that's easy. I would say probably go in the order of what I love. Apples, strawberries, blueberries, uh, peaches, and bananas. Mm, that just sounds like that. watermelon would be six. <laughs> I love some, but it's so seasonal. You know what I mean? So it's not on my mind right now. Vegetables, oh, sweet potatoes, onions, believe it or not. I absolutely love um, carrots. I eat a lot of, I would say, collard greens and cabbage and tomatoes. I love that. I can eat everything on your list. I love everything on your list except for onions. I onions give me the worst gas. Like really? So, yes, yes. Oh, oh I hate like, to hear that. But I can have onion powder 
and mm. I like the flavor of onions. And I can eat actually, I can actually eat chives off of my tree when I chop it up from the greens. But like chunky, like white or slices of onion yeah. or onion rings, I'm like, ooh, my stomach is like, mm -mm, honey. Oh my god, I hate to hear that. <laughs> and I think that's, you know, we all should find out those, those, those foods that we can and we can't have. And it's okay, because as long as we have the five that we can, you can yeah. make so many recipes. You can Google recipes with your favorite ingredient, recipes with oranges, recipes with bananas, recipes with sweet potatoes, and or vegan recipes with these um, yeah. things. And you'll find all these recipes. So there's just like a plethora of recipes online now. That's such a really good question. That's a good point. I've never thought about it that way to start with those, you know, 10 things, five fruits and five vegetables. That's really good. Yes. I really champion a lot of plants because again, it's like you said, it's, it's so easy to eat processed foods, but when you focus on the plants, you're going to get the nutrients, the vitamins, the mineral and the life force energy from your food versus eating the processed food. So I hope everyone's inspired by your answers. <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> okay. Last question. Okay. If we could wake up tomorrow and it's Jackie Reed's world, what would it look like? Oh my God. All the factory farms will be closed. <laughs> there would, it would not exist. Everything would be vegan. Every, all the food, all the restaurants, everybody would be happy about it. Everybody would be eating <laughs> vegan and there would be no leather in the stores, no cashmere, no wool. It would all be man-made or taken from plants um, like pineapple and things like that, that they're amazing mushrooms that they're amazingly turning into leather. Uh, it would, it would be that there would also be no racism. Systemic racism would not exist in a Jackie Reed world. It just would not exist. Black people would be thriving. Equality would be the norm. There would be no fear when you got pulled over by a police officer if you were a black man or woman that wouldn't the police would be our friend the justice system would be fair um you know wealth would be evenly divided among everybody there would be no poverty um you know everybody would have what they needed as far as food and resources to live and to thrive and to be happy that would that would be my world Oh, I love your world. I am ready to just like meditate and wake up and it's like, poof, done. Oh, I would be so happy, especially <sighs> knowing what I know now. If I could go to sleep and wake up in that world, the joy that you, you know what I mean? Oh, the gratitude oh, that I would have. Absolutely. Well, you know what? Just this conversation right here is making a difference, is, is shifting the vibration towards that world. And that's why I like to believe, you know, like every single day, everything, that, every single word that we say, every single choice that we make that is a conscious choice, that is a mindful choice, is planting a seed for that world to exist. Mm. Oh, I like thinking about it that way. You always give me something to just really think about. <laughs> I promise you, when I interviewed you and you told me how you take a moment during the day and you ask yourself, um, how do I feel and what do I need? I have told so many people about that. I have said, uh, I you Koya, she said this and it was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. And I will be saying the same thing about you. I just love your energy and I love the way that you are just, you just bubble and your feeling, you could feel what you're saying. Your words are so passionate and you oh, really get a you. sense of your genuine empathy and love for life. And that's why you are just, I mean, you just make my heart warm. And I was just oh. so excited. I like, I was like, let me get me my kombucha and let me get ready for this interview. Cause I was so excited. And I know it's the end of starting to get to the end of the day for us. And I was just so excited um, about our interview because I feel like, that's the energy that we need. And that's the energy that's really going to push this mindful movement forward is yeah. really showing, like you said, you can have fun. It can be sexy. And I think that 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 is the energy that we need because people want to have fun. People want to feel good. And really, it's just a lot of fear when it comes yeah. to shifting lifestyle, when it comes yeah. to even 
thinking about therapy. Um, it's just, there's a lot of fear surrounding, is this really going to be good for me, especially when it's not the norm, but to see people like yourself thriving and sharing and, you know, in a space where people are like, well, I can have whatever I want to eat. I can do whatever I want, but you're choosing to be ethical. You're choosing um, to be mindful when it's not always easy. And I, I really do feel that's going to inspire. It is inspiring so many people. It's going to continue to inspire so many people to live a plant-based lifestyle and to live a mindful lifestyle. I hope so. I really hope so. Thank you for saying that. That is encouraging to me. Absolutely. And I can't wait. I can't wait to see you. I can't wait. I know. I can't wait to try all the things we got. to. Once all the restaurants open up, we just got to try all the vegan things. I'm just list. There's so many vegan restaurants popping up. I'm just looking for all of the ones that are going to pop up after this pandemic. Oh, my God. One open during the pandemic. And I just finished eating some of their pasta that they make with these uh, scallops. They're really mushrooms. It is this lemon, like uh, buttery pasta girl. Oh my God, their food, it is, it has to be the best, I'm gonna say it, the best vegan food from a restaurant I've ever had. Ooh, was it Julie Goes Vegan? No, it's called Willow. It's Ooh. called the Will uh, Willow Bistro, New York. This food, they do a chicken marsala that they do this flatbread. They have sub sandwiches, like a uh, meatball uh, sub sandwiches. They do um, like a hot chicken fried, ch they do a Cobb salad with vegan, um, they use seitan for their chicken. Uh huh. This place is crazy, it's crazy how good it is. They do um, like steak and frites, but the steaks are made out of seitan. I can't. It's so good. It's crazy. Wow. You make me want to come to New York right now. You have to. Well, like, when the I don't know. Why, over, you have to come. And I'm right? taking you hello. Okay. I, I say so hungry because we're just going to eat. We're just going to eat. <laughs> we're going to eat our way through New York. Yeah. That would make me happy. I, and I don't know why for a moment I was thinking you were in LA. And I was just like, uh, this new place popped up. And it's same. It's like Italian and they have subs and they have, you know, vegan shrimp and these things. And it's so good. Oh, that's so good. good. Okay, well, when you come to LA, we're going to eat our way through LA. And when I come to New yes. York, we're going to eat our way through New York vegan style. Yep, we are doing both of those things as soon as we can, for sure. Okay. I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you. I appreciate your time. I know so many people got value out of this podcast. So can you just end with where people can find you on social media and online? Yes, you can find me in two places on social media. I'm everywhere at Jackie Reed, and that's J-A-C-Q-U-E-R-E-I-D, or at Vegan Sexy Cool. And if you go to vegansexycool.com, you can find everything there, also links to my podcast. But if you're searching for a new podcast, then the Vegan Sexy Cool podcast is where you can check me out on that platform. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jackie. So awesome to have you on the show. And thank you all. Thank you listeners that come to the show every week so I can have amazing guests to pour into you and let you know how they are getting loved up. The Get Loved Up lifestyle is all about loving yourself, loving others, and loving the world one day at a time, one breath at a time. Our goal is to inspire in the areas of spirituality, in the areas of well-being, and in the areas of entrepreneurship. So if you love this podcast with Jackie Reed, then go ahead and leave us a review and let us know on social your takeaways. Tag me, tag Jackie. We will respond. So just let us know how you're feeling. Let us know what you love. Let us know what you didn't like too. I'm always open to feedback. And if you haven't already, go ahead and leave me a review. Your reviews keep this podcast going and allows us to have more guests like Jackie. So leave a review. And until next time, peace and love. I just want to take a moment to say thank you for being part of the Get Loved Up community. I like to share topics and people making a positive impact in the world, and your feedback means the world to me. If you haven't already left a review, please leave a five-star review and let me know what you want to hear more of on the show. I'm here for you, and together, we're making the world a better place, one day at a time, one show at a time. Thank you for listening.